right. Good Tuesday morning. Got your man got the day off. Your boy's got the day off. Really don't have anything to do. And you know how to really, really mess with a guy with... I think I have ADHD. A lot of you guys say that I have ADHD, but I'll tell you how to really mess with that kind of guy is give him nothing to do. I lose my mind. Uh, just got done watching. There actually was a new episode of Roadkill Up, the Stubby Bob. They made it like 300 miles. I don't want to spoil it if you guys are the type that watch it, but check that out. Found all three pairs. I found one in a basement and suitcase that I just took to Michigan. That made sense. At this point, I'm just keeping the camera on for the light. Ooh, baby. There's one pair of them. The other is the scratched up pair that I needed forever. But for some reason, this never dawns on me to look right here. We've got a basket for like headphones and sunglasses and just little little stuff like that. And it's the pair that I let my little boy wear that he probably put in there. A six year old boy, smarter than me. Right? I gotta throw my shoes on. I gotta get out of this house. I am picking up the kids later, so I don't have a whole day off, I guess. Which kind of set my plans back one day, but tomorrow is gonna be a, a, a lot more interesting. I'll tell you that much. I don't wanna give it away, obviously, but they gotta get better than what they are, right? I mean, I sat down all night last night and just did bad math with bills. What, what was that about, Gotcha? What was that? I seen somebody's comment that was like, joke's on me, I watched the whole video. <laughs> Dude, that's funny. I like good comments like that. Let me grab a hat real quick. You know what? Check out this hat rack. It's actually really convenient. Got, got, got me that. Got, got, got. God, God got me that. We may have to change our name soon. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, that, cause this side's heavier and I've seen other wired headphones like this, wired, wireless, that they're, they put like a false block on the other side just to even out the weight. This company here could have learned a thing or two, huh? Oh. Remote started that a long time ago. They only run for like five or 10 minutes, I think. Well, yeah, I'm gonna go and... What are you looking at, Cat? I think maybe she feeds them the second she walks out the door is the reason, yeah. This is the reason they look at me like that when I come out. Do you want me to feed you? All right, hold on. Gee whiz, dude. I promise this video's going somewhere. And if you've seen the title, yeah, I'm... I might be falling back into my old ways, guys. Cat food. Yeah, you know, I know I, I transition. I'm like, I don't want to, I want to do vlog style videos. I don't want to spend all my time critiquing people who say pretty insane, crazy stuff. And that's one of the reasons I quit watching certain people. But this guy here, uh, I, I don't follow him on any other platform, mainly because he blocked me, because I must have said something that hurt his feelings. But uh, I, I, a video on YouTube popped up. Oh boy. Oh boy. Whoa! Uh, no way, is this what I think it is? It is not. What a let down. Who are you? Dang, going, they put people's cell phone numbers and everything on those. I legit thought that was my keys and headphones, but let's feed this stupid cat. I say give them, give them another few hours. They ought to be dry. Poor God, God. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mom. What is this red stuff on this? I can at least spread them out a little bit so it's a wonder the storm didn't blow them away. All right. Spare pair of Cleta shades engaged. I meant to not even bring this phone. Anytime I take off of work. I, I try to completely separate myself from work. And this, this is not good. All right, before I dust the old critiquing chair off in there and kind of fall back in my old ways, at least for one video. 
it's it's really odd and kind of therapeutic a little bit lately going through these stories with you guys as just a daily vlog thing and just a, another way of sharing with you guys so we've been doing stories and it's helped me out just talking about them and it's really fun seeing how how well she remembers things and just just sharing it in general and and if you guys like it that's cool if you don't i completely understand but it made me think of another story i think my boys the other morning we were driving somewhere and we seen a um a phone booth like those old school phone booths that you stick a quarter in and call somebody and it reminded me of this story and i want to share it with you guys and i won't I promise I won't bore you with stories all the time. Like I said, tomorrow's video is going to be pretty fun, and this weekend is going to be wicked. But, um, yeah, I, I legit thought I had my headphones back. I do have the one Raycon that I was wearing in my ear when I left the hotel, which I could put that back in the, the case and charge it whenever whenever that finally gets here. It's supposed to be out for the delivery today. I had the option to choose to pick it up, I picked the camera up, hit record, and then I went to choose that option. I was like, oh, I'll do it on video. And it was like out for delivery. So I missed that, I guess. So let's go tell this story. I might eat a bite for lunch. And then, dude, if you know who you are and you're already watching this and you're like, why is he talking crap about me again? I'm not, it's not crap, okay? But I really feel like you need to hear this and anybody else that has the same mindset that you do needs to hear this all right i'm almost to the street where this story starts oh i did just get an email just got an email about my headphones and keys hold on they were just letting me know that um it's out for delivery i already knew that you know how many times i've refreshed shipment tracking number so if i remember right as a kid this road over here is like a horseshoe and the road i'm referring to this is browse street i believe it's spelled b-r-o-u-s-e this is in west portsmouth ohio and this is where the foster family home that i lived in was located ah oh, the irony there's a UPS truck right there. I wonder if it's the guy that's got my headphones. Should I get out and harass him? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, this is Elm. This is Roby. And maybe I got this wrong. It's been a long time, people. But the story starts here, so I need to make sure that I start it in the right way. Nope, it is not the wrong street. All right, and there's the house. I'm building out back that this guy like polished rocks or whatever. So yeah, Brow Street. So there's Brow Street right there. And the reason I pulled over is I want to measure how far this is, the distance. So trip, hate to reset a whole trip for it, but I think Actually, this one has two different trips, so. All right, so trip reset. So, that's Brow Street right there. And I'm gonna show you, I was 13 years old, I believe, 12 or 13. And the lady, the foster mom, their names were Marshall and Linda Adkins. I know she has passed away. And last I seen, he had gotten busted and sent to prison himself, even though he was a prison guard. That probably went really well for him. I think Marshall was selling drugs and, and, and all that. I mean, they were corrupt people. And this blew my mind because I remember the guy that places you in the foster care system telling me that they just won an award for foster parent of the year. They're great people, yada, yada, yada. Well, Marshall worked a late shift. He would leave late at night and you wouldn't see him till the next morning. So I'm assuming it was third shift, but I can't say for sure at the prison. He would come in there before he left to go to the his prison shift. That guy got way over like I'm in the road or something. He would like pressure point you. And it was like a, it was like a, 
prison there. I mean, there, the rules, the, the timed meals, you only had so much time to eat your meal. If you were in the bathroom for too long, they would come and ask you what you're doing, and which I guess that one's kind of normal. Uh, the, the phone calls, though, that was the thing, is there was a corded phone on the wall, and if you tried to call somebody from there, the lady would stand, Linda would stand, and right in your face with her finger over the thing, and you only had a certain amount of minutes, not only was she listening to what you were saying, but once you're, she was just watching her timer and just would hang the phone up on you. Real rotten lady, real nasty lady. And she would also sneak out at night, load us, all of us foster kids up in the van, and she would drive down to the bar after Marshall went to work at the prison and leave us outside while she sat in there and drank and then come and swerve her way all the way back to the house from Portsmouth she would do too that was a nightly ritual is she would come in that room where I slept and she would make it a point to come in there after you had fell asleep right if you went in there at 10 o'clock to fall asleep it was like 10 30 she would purposely come in there just to jar you awake and then she would open that window up to show you that it wasn't locked from the inside or outside and you know, so it, this thing opens no problem. So if you want to run away, have at it. Real nasty lady. And even though, and, and you see this a lot in relationships nowadays too, that the abused returns to their abuser for several reasons. That's where they are familiar. That's where they're comfortable. That's what they're used to. And they'd rather be abused and be in a bad situation than to be in whatever you call that. Well... I, I decided one day as a 13 year old boy, you know what, today's the day. I might have been 12 actually, I don't think about it because I was still in middle school. Anyway, I thought today's the day. Today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take charge. I managed to scrape up a couple quarters and I thought I'm gonna call my family and just tell them it's okay to live in an abusive home. I wanna come back home. I don't wanna do this foster thing anymore. Because that was the dream, right, that they sold you. It was like, oh, well, we know that it's kind of a rough situation you live in, but if you go to Foster Parents of the Year, Marshall and Linda, it's going to be so much better. It was not. So, I grab my quarters, and I start heading down this road here, and I'll show you guys how far it is. I'll speed it up. memory serves me correct and I know some of my viewers are from this area the payphone used to sit I think over here nonetheless it was this store here that I had walked to see that's over a mile and a half 1.7 miles which at the time seemed like so far away as a kid and one of the main things is the whole entire time, I was fearful that Marshall or Linda would drive by and see me because they thought that I was just in that little horseshoe neighborhood just kind of walking around or whatever. And uh, he would do this pressure point thing on you that he said that, he said, I use this to take the, the inmates down. I was vacuuming one day and he did it, pushed you somewhere and it would just kind of collapse you or whatever, which cool, Marshall. I have all three legs to this tripod now again and it's it's almost worse than when I had it with two legs I get all the way here I throw in those quarters this is a Hail Mary right this is a 12 or 13 year old's Hail Mary I'm gonna walk almost two miles you know risk getting whatever is gonna get you know whatever's coming to me from those foster parents and I'm gonna drop these quarters and I'm gonna call my family, you know, get a hold of my mother and father and um, tell them I wanna come home. And I put those quarters in that phone. My mother answered the phone and she hung up on me. And that was when I learned that even though you only talk for a few seconds, the, the phones, they still take your quarters. They, it, I didn't get my quarters back. <laughs> that, was, that was a rip off. I was hitting the coin return like, no, wait a minute, she hung up on me. And 
it's probably the it's probably for the best that I didn't have any more quarters to call again. But I just remember that being that was the moment for me. And it's weird because I, I find it hard to relate with some grown men my age and just because they still act like a baby and they still act like somebody else is going to figure it out for them and they still act like what am i supposed to do I, I don't know how to do that so that's i guess that's it no dude that was the moment and that was the changing point for me in my brain when i realized you're alone in this world of course you get married and kind of develop your own family but as far as getting from that point as a 12 year old boy or some of you guys as grown men to the point of achieving whatever level of success that you're after nobody's gonna do that for you nobody cares that you walk uh over a mile and a half and put your last quarter in nobody cares okay they're going to keep living life as life is life turn the jams up let's get another round of beers right you got to figure it out and I didn't figure it out overnight, but I realized then was like, well, I'm gonna have to get myself out of this situation. And I ran away from that place. And eventually, thank God my sister become an adult because she's a few years older than me and was able to take custody on me then, which that's a whole nother story time because boy, I put her through it. Uh, imagine your sister being the one that has to come to the school. <laughs> and sit in a conference room while they explain to your guardian the goofy stuff that you've done and then her trying not to laugh. But anyway, I, I, I say that like I took control of my own situation. Even as a little boy, I thought I'm not gonna let this crazy Linda lady be like that to me no more. I'm not gonna let Marshall, you know, have me do every man's chore in that house, paint the fence, cut the yard, do all that crap, right? And then still just try out his pressure points on me uh whatever i i was like i'm, I'm out of here dude one day they dropped me off at the front of the school i went in there had my day of school and at the end of the day linda's sitting out there in her van with that stupid look on her face and i said peace out linda and i went out the back door and figured it out i guess is what i'm trying to say but uh let's move on and to the rest of you guys out there man that you think you had it better because mommy pampered you and mommy done everything for you and still scrambles your eggs at 27 years old. Mommy's doing the worst thing she could have done for you. Mommy needs to hang up on you, right? So you can figure it out. Let's go back to the house and try to give another guy advice that probably doesn't think he needs Ooh. it. His wife's modes, y'all. That's his wife's modes to her teeth, yo. Modes, modes. If you can't say the word mold, you're probably too stupid to speak on it. All right. <sighs> Is this thing on? Ready to critique some people. This ain't going to be an everyday thing because I really don't want to get back into that habit. But where do I start? This guy's baby isn't even a month old yet, and he's already telling all the fathers of the world how to be a proper father Shoo! I know sorry I gotta split these up I gotta I gotta get a day ahead or I'm, I'm never gonna make it and cliffhangers that's how you pay that truck off baby Woo!